Hello students. So this is the final lecture of this particular course series where we are discussing the electrochemical equilibrium and I am discussing the applications of the concepts that we have developed in this course so far. So the first application that we have already discussed is how to determine the standard molar uh, entropy and enthalpy changes associated with the cell reaction. So what we said was for this purpose all you need to do is measure the E0 value of the cell at different temperatures and then you can find out delta RS0 and delta RH0 by knowing the E0 at a given temperature and also the value of DE0 DT at the same temperature. Now we also discussed how to use this uh, uh, concept to find out the uh, change in entropy and enthalpy during the cell reaction and we applied it to this electrochemical cell. The second application that we were talking about was regarding the determination of activity coefficient of an electrolyte. As you would understand that when you would construct an electrochemical cell, the quantity that you control or that you manipulate in the laboratory is the concentration of the electrolyte in solution. So this means that I would like to find out whenever I would like to find out the activity of the electrolyte so that I can carry out further analysis of the properties of the solution, I would need to know the activity coefficients. And for this purpose, I told you that if I have a strong electrolyte of this formula, then it would be useful for me to define an overall chemical potential which contains contributions from the positive ion as well as from the negative ions and then using this information I can define what is known as a mean ionic molality and a mean ionic activity coefficient and accordingly the chemical potential of the electrolyte turns out to be mu equal to mu naught plus this. Now, in this case, what is the definition of activity? The definition of activity now is turning out to be gamma plus minus to the power of mu plus minus m plus minus to the power of mu plus minus. Now, this is the beauty of the treatment that we have developed for the thermodynamic using the th language of thermodynamics. All we had to do was we really had to look at what mu is and this is the standard state value plus some additional value which is RT ln A and therefore by looking at what we have derived here we can easily identify what the activity of the electrolyte is. Now as I have already said that it is this quantity that you manipulate. You would say that I am having a 2 molal solution of sodium chloride. Of course, that means that you have 1.0 moles of Na plus ion and 1.0 mole of Cl minus ion in solution. But you would like to express the activity for the salt as a whole and that is where the concept of mean ionic molality and mean ionic activity coefficient comes into the picture. Now if you would like to uh, use the debye huckel theory then you know that for the given uh, salt solution you can find out the ionic strength and you use this theory to find out the log value of gamma plus minus. If you know the charge numbers on, on the cation and the anion. But if you have a concentrated solution, in that case you can always go back and measure the uh, cell potential 
in terms of activities and obtain the mean activity coefficient from this cell potential. So, if I write down the Nernst equation for the given cell reaction, I find that ln gamma plus minus will be given by an expression like this. And if I know the concentration of HCl solution that I am using, which is B in moles per kg of water, I should be able to find out what gamma plus minus is by measuring E and knowing E naught from the standard data table. Now, this brings us to the third application that I will I am going to talk about and this is the determination of solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt. Now, there are several sparingly soluble salts that are known in the literature and here I have taken the example of a generic salt which is shown here. So, what happens if you put a sparingly soluble salt in water? In water, a chemical equilibrium is established where Mx in the solid form is partially dissociated and it produces M plus ion in the aqueous medium and X minus ion in the aqueous medium. Now, since it is a sparingly soluble salt, as you understand, only a very small concentration of these ions will be present in the medium. Therefore, if you take, for example, an oxalic acid solution, which is a, a good solvent, in that case, if you measure the conductance of the solution, you will find that it is something like uh, 3 millisiemens. But if you take a sparingly soluble salt, dissolve it and take its saturated solution at a given temperature, its conductance would be something like 3 microsiemens. Therefore, the concentration of the salts which are carrying the current in this experiment is going to be much, much smaller when you are considering a sparingly soluble salt. Now, let us think about the equilibrium constant for this chemical equilibrium. So, that is going to be activity of M plus into activity of X minus divided by activity of Mx. And I am going to simplify it by writing that this ratio is nothing but the product of activities of the cation and the anion only. And this is because by convention for the pure solid phase, the activity is equal to 1. And therefore, I understand that for this equilibrium established between the undissociated salt Mx in its solid phase and the dissociated forms giving the ions M plus and X minus in the aqueous medium, the equilibrium constant is going to be a product of activity of M plus into activity of X minus. And we would call this equilibrium constant the KSP or the solubility product. Now, if I want to find out KSP, obviously you understand I need to know about the activity of the M plus ion and the X minus ion. Now, this is how I am going to deal with this problem. Now, think of KSP as an equilibrium constant. If I know the relationship between E naught of an electrochemical cell where this is the cell reaction, then I can very easily find out what KSP is going to be in terms of E naught at a given temperature if provided I know the number of number of moles of electrons transferred at each electrode for the entire balanced chemical reaction. Also, many of these cases what you actually do is you dissolve some amount s grams uh, mole, uh, uh, s moles per liter of the salt itself and therefore it turns out to be 
much more convenient to write down the molality in terms of a, what is known as the solubility S. And therefore, I can write Ksp as in a, the, uh, instead of the activities, this is the square of mean ionic coefficient and this is the solubility of the salt in a chosen unit that you can think of. Now, I can use these two relations and combine them to say that S square in this case is going to be 1 by gamma plus minus exponential N F E naught by R T. So, here please remember that I have used S as the molality of the saturated solution of Mx. Now, for a dilute solute, what one can assume that gamma plus minus is approximately equal to 1. Now, when I am determining the solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt, do you think that we can use this approximation? The answer is yes simply because this equilibrium lies mostly towards the reactant side. Therefore, it can be very easily assumed that it is a highly dilute solution and therefore, gamma plus minus is going to be approximately equal to 1. So, in that case, I can say that if I put it back in this expression, then I have an expression of the solubility S square if the solubility is S, then I have S square directly related to exponential of N F E naught by R T. So, now let us have this exercise to determine the solubility of sodium chloride, which is a sparingly soluble salt. Now, if you are given a sodium chloride sample, the first thing that you should look up is the standard reduction potential and you will find immediately that these are the two values which are available in the literature. The first one says that I have silver chloride when it is reduced by a single elect by, by an uptake of a single electron, it gets converted to silver solid and it would release Cl minus ion in the solution. And the standard reduction potential for this uh, uh, half cell reaction is plus 0.222 volt. Now, think about another half cell reaction whereby I have Ag plus aqueous that can be reduced using one mole of an electron and then producing Ag solid for which E naught value is 0.799 volt. Now, using these two relationships, I think I can go ahead and find out one electrochemical cell for which the cell uh, reaction is nothing but the solubility equilibrium that AgCl solid dissociates into Ag plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous with a very small amount of dissociation having taken place in the uh, at equilibrium. And then you understand that I can construct this electrochemical cell and this electrochemical cell while constructing I have put the Ag, Ag plus electrode on the left and silver solid silver chloride electrode immersed in its aqueous HCl solution on the right. Now, why did I do that? It was done looking at the values of E naught and uh, uh, E naught R and E naught L. As you would understand that if one half cell reaction is having a higher reduction potential, then you can use it to reduce the other part of the half cell. Now, co comparing these two values, we find that 
Ag plus Ag is a stronger reducing agent than the AgCl Ag pair. Therefore, we will use this half cell as the anode where it will itself undergo oxidation. Now look at the choice for the cathode. At the cathode, the silver chloride solid will undergo reduction and this reaction will be spontaneous in this direction. It does not proceed much till it attains equilibrium because silver chloride is a sparingly soluble salt. Now combining all this, what is going to be E0 cell? The E0 cell is going to be E0 right minus E0 left. So if I take E0 right as 0.222 volt and subtract from it the E0L which is 0.799 volt, I find that E0 cell is going to be minus of 0.577 volt. Now once I know this, then what I can do is I can find out Ksp under standard condition as exponential of NFE0 by RT. And as you see that if I put in this value of E0, I know the value of F and N because here N is equal to 1. And if I am working at a temperature T equal to 298 Kelvin, I will find that K is equal, Ksp0 is equal to 1.76 into 10 to the power of minus 10. Now what does it tell me? It immediately tells me that I knew that S square that is equal to Ksp. Therefore, if I take a square root of this number, I should be able to obtain the solubility of AgCl under standard conditions at 298 Kelvin in water. And that precisely turns out to be this number, which is a typical of a sparingly soluble salt. So if you take another soluble salt, uh, sparingly soluble salt like barium sulfate, once again, you will see that its solubility is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 5 moles per kg. So this gives me some idea about how to find out the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt provided you know how to set up an electrochemical cell for which the cell reaction will be the same as the solubility equilibrium and then you can read out the standard reduction potentials of uh, the half cells from standard data and obtain the equilibrium constant and then calculate the solubility of that salt. And here is the last example and that is the determination of pH of a solution. Now this process involves the following example. Let's say that I construct an electrochemical cell by coupling a hydrogen uh, gas, standard hydrogen uh, electrode with what is known as a calomel electrode. So what do I have in the calomel electrode? I have mercury liquid in contact with a mercurous chloride solid and these two are put in a, an aqueous solution of HCl so that I have Cl minus common to the Ag2Cl2 solid. And here as I have represented the two uh, electrodes are separated by a salt bridge. Now the electrode reaction that I would have here is half mole of Ag2Cl2 solid will take up one mole of electron thereby getting converted into mercury liquid and Cl minus aqueous. Now in Ag2Cl2 solid, what is the oxidation state of uh, mercury? The oxidation state of mercury is 1 plus. So in this reaction at cathode, 
I find that AG, uh, the mercury goes from plus 1 oxidation state to 0 oxidation state and therefore it is a reduction reaction. Now let us have a look at what is the E0 value for this electrode. Now a standard chemical electrode is a very stable and reliable one for whom the, uh, the E0 value at different temperatures are very well known and here I am showing you the E0 value at the standard state at T equal to 298 Kelvin and this is 0.268 volt. Now if I look at what is happening at the anode, I will see that half mole of hydrogen will undergo an oxidation whereby H0 goes to H1 plus state and I have an electron released at the anode. Therefore, if I write down the cell equation, cell reaction, this is the net cell reaction and for this I can use the Nernst equation and obtain the following equations. Now here as I understand I have only one mole of electron transferred at each electrode. Therefore here in the denominator of this term I have only F. Now if I think of the writing whatever appears in the uh, in, uh, in this place what I uh, uh, in the logarithm term what I find is that the only term that survives is activity of H plus. That is because I have the uni univalent electrolyte here and the activity of H plus is going to be surviving in here. Now therefore what I can do is I can rewrite this expression and say that minus ln activity of H plus is going to be F by RT into E minus E naught. But I know that pH by definition is negative of the log to the best 10 of the activity of H plus. And therefore I can very easily say that the pH can be determined if I know the potential cell potential E, I know the standard cell potential E naught and at a given temperature then for a given solution I can find out the pH of that solution. So this is a method, this electrochemical method is something that is used in a wide variety of systems. So if you have different solutions, the, this is where you are going to put it in contact with the hydrogen gas electrode and you can read out using a galvanometer the pH of the solution provided you know E and E naught. So in conclusion, let me say this. What is it that we have learnt in this course? We started off by saying that I needed some principles to describe the macroscopic properties of a system in terms of a minimum number of parameters. And we took the help of thermodynamics in doing so. And when we do that, we realize that there are certain laws that the system must obey. In this course, we have shown how the ideal gases, the simplest of the systems that we could have considered can be explored using the laws of thermodynamics. Also, we have talked about many different systems like a simple non-reacting mixture, a simple non-reacting gas mixture, non-reacting liquid mixture or chemical reactions having many different reactants, products in equilibrium with each other and finally a very non-inhomogeneous situation where I have not only different phases of different materials present 
but I have ions taking part in chemical reactions and giving you the concept of electrochemical equilibrium. Now, in all these cases, we could use the concept of thermodynamics. Initially, we limited our discussion to the uh, systems which are closed systems, where the total number of particles were held constant. But later on, we found that this is not a binding constraint on thermodynamics. Thermodynamics can very easily handle systems which can be broadly labeled as open systems. And eventually, we have seen that if the number of particles present in the system vary either by moving out of the system or moving into a system across the wall separating the system and the surrounding or if these number changes because of a chemical reaction or because when in an electrochemical cell the electrons are being deposited or withdrawn from the electrode, thermodynamics gives us practically usable relationships to use in the laboratory and analyze the results of our experiments. With this note, I am going to close this uh, course. I thank you very much for your kind attention.